There we go. Trying to activate the uh, the phone with my gloves on. <laughs> yeah, baby. It's cold. Turn the fan down. It's, uh, I think it's like it's less than 30 degrees. So, where are we? I can't remember. <laughs> uh, well, actually, I do remember. We're in Romans 4, but I don't remember what it was about. So, I'm going to switch to what I do remember. And uh, that was... Um, uh, I've been listening to this Louisiana older guy named David Hogan. <laughs> this guy is a trip. Um, he's just unapologetic about believing God's word. And uh, he's kind of um, harsh with his language. Um, you know, like saying things like, um, you know, you don't know because you're an unbeliever. You know, I know because I'm a believer. You know, that kind of thing. And God uses him in, in just miraculous ways. He, he told the story of uh, this one girl who was born deaf and God used him to healed the sweet little thing and now he always visits her you know whenever he's in that area he goes back and of course they always touch base um and just so the reason why I'm bringing him up is uh because I wanted to say that and I've and I've thought this for a long time I just for some reason I haven't brought it up in my teaching here and that is that God doesn't need you to be aware that the Bible is not perfect if you want to believe the whole book is perfect he's going to honor you for honoring him He's going to honor you for your error <laughs> because your heart is in the right place. You know, you know that God can't lie. So if God said anything or if God had anything written down, then it has to be true. So he, he will honor you for that. Even if you're incorrect. And I think that's certainly the case with this guy, David Hogan, and a bunch of people like him, right? Whereas this guy, what set, what, uh, it's got me interested in this guy over other people who believe the Bible is inerrant. Is he's being really genuine to who he is. I think too often we see like televangelists or preachers or these pastors of mega churches and they're, they're also full of themselves. Um, you know, they're really, they're really wrapped up into packaging their message and themselves and their image and presenting it in a way that it really just I don't know I it feels way too rehearsed and fabricated and I just I have very little respect for that especially if people are aware of the power of the Holy Spirit and instead of waiting on God which David Hogan does uh you know, they're just performing their their usual presentation and it's just 
it's ugly is what it is it's really it's like disturbing and in that sense you know you know that's more disturbing to me than whether or not you believe the Bible to be inerrant or not you know it's such a precious thing that someone would be touched by the Spirit of God it needs to be delivered with that respect of what of how powerful and unique that exchange is from the one giving the message to the one receiving um, so yeah that's why I make a big deal about what matters most in life is his character being built in us so that's not in a it, it, you, the character of God is humble is loving is passionate is uh, sincere and when people are not those things then it just makes the message that much more escaping me at the moment but anyway people are people's lives are too precious for them to be played with is what I'm trying to say and so our goal in life should always be to be in our best form with the spirit of God operating fully in us so that if we have that opportunity to have a meaningful exchange with someone that we're able to do it in a way that truly honors the life that we're experiencing and that needs to be our highest priority in life Because Jesus has come to give us complete access to the Father so that His Spirit rests in us in such a strong way that people have evidence that He's alive and they can see that this isn't something that somebody has just manufactured. that way they can be touched in whatever way they need to be touched whether it's a physical healing or a financial release or a relationship building or an understanding of his word or whatever it might be we are positioned ourselves to be primed for that very moment of exchange and yeah, sweethearts, that's what I'm thinking about. And I just love him, David Hogan, this guy. <laughs> you gotta see him to believe him. He's funny. Um, he's, he's the opposite of this, of the, uh, the well-rehearsed televangelist. Yet, in 
my opinion, it's obvious that the Spirit of God rests on him and in him. All right, sweethearts, have a good day.